This is Dabu7. It appears that the U.S. military is taking this outbreak that is going global here very seriously. There has been an executive order issued that initiated the implementation of the Department of Defense Global Campaign Plan for Pandemic Influenza and Infectious Diseases. This is 3551-13. Now, we don't know all the details of the plan, but we do know that it instructs U.S. military officials to prepare for widespread outbreaks. I briefly touched on this last night on the other stream, talking about how they have 11 bases picked that they're going to start setting up these quarantine stations in. Some they already have that beginning. Others, they're working on the plans. Then that can expand outside of there. It's interesting because we were looking at the CDC stations and the quarantine stations in their jurisdictions right at the gate when this all started to break loose. And we noticed that in the interior of the country, there are hardly any CDC stations, meaning someone in Colorado would have to be shipped like all the way down to Los Angeles. Now, with doing this, I'm not sure what's going to come of these stations exactly, where people are going to be going and all that, but they're saying they're going to be utilizing their bases and that the U.S. military is rolling out this global campaign plan for a pandemic. So when they say that, it's not just for here in the United States. It says it in the name. It's a global campaign. I'll continue to break this down further tonight on the live show. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahashem, meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel. Starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, so this is the brother you call coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Hawa Kakurash, right, uh, from the GMS uh, branch out in Des Moines, Iowa. And um, as you heard in that clip um, from Dabu77, uh, the clip entitled uh, Executive Order Initiates U.S. Military Global Campaign for Pandemic. All right, so uh, the military is gearing up um, and uh, practicing, all right, to uh, start throwing people in these concentration camps and things of that nature, man. All right, which is letting you know that we're coming uh, very close to uh, all hell breaking out loose um, throughout the planet Earth. Well, here in America, should I say, because all types of calamities are happening throughout the planet Earth. But the Lord has really been preserving um, America for great destruction. All right. And let me go ahead and start off with this, all right? Uh, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 21, and verse, let me see, Ezekiel 21, and verse 8, it says, Again, the word of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened, and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. So that's right. It says the sword is sharpened and the sword is an instrument used to bring forth death. All right. To put somebody to death. And the Lord has various ways that he's going to be doing that. But the point being is that destruction is being prepared. All right. Esau Edom is practicing. Okay. Preparing to start putting people to death in mass numbers, man. All right. As we see uh, these uh, pandemics continue. Uh. These um, pestilences continue to uh, to grow. All right. Uh, we're seeing uh, the military getting ready. You know, all these things are uh, happening, man. It's being prepared to bring destruction, great wrath from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. All right. The Lord is going to be using Esau Edom as a as a, a chief tool to bring forth a lot of this destruction as well, as it says in the book of Psalms, chapter seventeen. And verse, the Salaki of Psalms 19. This is Psalms chapter 19. Uh, maybe it was 17. Salakia. Yep, Psalm 17 and uh, 
13, it says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. That's right. The wicked pursuing the Malachi 1 and 4 and Job 9 and 24 is Esau Edom. All right. The so-called white man. All right. So that's who the Lord is going to use to execute his wrath upon um, chiefly you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans. As it says in the book of Revelation, let's go ahead and grab this as well. Revelation chapter 12 and 12, and then I'll jump to the last few verses. Revelation 12 and 12. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And that's what we see happening right now. That's why all these plans that he's been doing for decades, these rumors, so to speak, that uh, the men of the Lord have been warning you about are these concentration camps starting off with our elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down. All right. There was a point where they were teaching about uh, martial law. And have martial law signs and different camps were laughing at, uh, uh, at our apostles, man. You know, we're laughing at the chip, mocking these things. Well, now it's the time where these prophecies are speaking, man. As it says in Habakkuk, the second chapter, at the end it shall speak and not lie. So now, all right, you're going to be faced with the judgment to come. And if you've sincerely repented, all right, if you've been taking the Lord seriously, or if you've been mocking the prophets, all right, pushing off the day of the Lord. All right, now the Lord is about to start executing this judgment. So we see clearly that the Lord is closing those doors of repentance, man. All right, because this war is being prepared. And Lord's will, we get back to that in Ezekiel, the 21st chapter. But it says, uh, Revelation 12 and 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So in these concentration camps and things of that nature, man, they are not going to spare. All right. It's not going to be pretty as uh, Apostle Ramla all right, mentioned in his lesson, man. He did a lesson earlier today entitled uh, Perilous Times. All right. And he touched up on this subject about the military getting involved with uh, uh, getting involved in, um, you know, uh, uh, pretty much what uh, Dabu 77 was uh, speaking on. Salakia. All right. Uh, organization for, um, you know, with like FEMA and things of that nature, man. All right, because this is going to be people that are being, going to be put uh, getting put to death. And like Apostle had the Apostle had mentioned, just like what's going on with the Northern Kingdom over at the border, man. All right, they had they had them in those uh, in in those camps. All right, and um, I remember reading the article, and I believe the Spirit had me do a lesson on it, but that page got terminated. GMS Des Moines, so now we're using GMS Des Moines too. But um, I mentioned how. Uh, one of the uh, the police uh, policemen or chief officers mentioned that they are not accountable for any sexual uh, harassment or sexual abuse that happens to uh, anybody in those camps, man. All right. And they were separating the, the children and the in their um, parents and things of that nature. So you already know all types of children are being raped in there. OK, with no uh, with no repercussions. All right. But this is what happens, man, when. When our people were rebellious, all right, and don't turn into the Lord. When we don't turn into the Lord, the Lord turns away from us, man. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and grab that. I know I'm kind of all over the place. You know, I got a lot of things rolling through my head, but, you know, Lord's will, the spirit just uh, allows us to, to come out. But Hosea 4 and 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. So at one point, all right, our people didn't know to do better. They didn't know the true name of the heavenly father. They didn't know the name of his only begotten son. They didn't know that eating certain foods was uh, um, uh, was against the laws of the Bible. All right. That they weren't supposed to do those things, that it was displeasing to the Lord. All right. They didn't know those things. All right. All of us didn't know at one point. But as it says in the book of Acts 17 and 30. All right, let's grab it. It says, for as much, or as, excuse me, Acts 17 and 30, at, in the times of this ignorance, meaning not, not knowing, right? The most I winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So the Lord overlooked our, our ignorance, but now he commands everybody to repent. So all of our people that don't repent are going to be destroyed, man. Okay, they're going to die in their iniquities, man. All right, like it says back in that Hosea 4 and 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. So the knowledge is being presented. All right, the way to salvation. All right, the way to Yahweh Shai. All right, uh, being taught the things that are pleasing unto the Lord. All right, that, that way has been made plain. It's been made clear. 
The scripture says, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they would not have sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. So when these things are happening, it's, it's a direct judgment all right, for not repenting. Okay, when when our people are getting destroyed in these concentration camps, these natural disasters, these pestilences, OK, whatever various way that the Lord decides to uh, put them to death, it's all because of a rejection of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. OK, because that's all the Lord is going to deliver those that turn from their transgressions in Jacob, those that repent within the 12 tribes of Israel pursuing the Isaiah the 59th chapter. All right. So let's uh, finish it off. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law, the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. And that's a very serious thing, man. OK, reading it at times, people just uh, it just brushes over their shoulder because they don't have the fear of the Lord. All right. But actually seeing that, experiencing that. OK. Your children being stripped away from you and you not having any power in your hands. All right. They're getting uh, uh, thrown in a concentration camp and you can't do anything about it. All right. Well, you forgot to serve the Lord. So the Lord is going to forget your children, man. OK, plain and simple, man. So these are very serious times, man. This is not a, a, a time to 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 walk in. A, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, pretty much, man, to, to be bullshitting the Lord, man. All right, to be plain, but let me go back. Revelation chapter 12 and verse, uh, I want to jump to the last verse just to prove the point that that wrath that he's coming down with that we read in verse 12 is going to be targeted towards you Israelites, man. It says, Revelation 12 and 17, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And the woman is speaking of uh, the, the nation of Israel. As it says in Jeremiah, the Lord is likening the daughter of Zion into a comely and delicate woman, Right. So it says in the dragon, all right, being Esau, Edom, okay, with the, uh, in the dragon, his whole power structure, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So he's pissed off at you Israelites, man, okay? And chiefly, all right, those that are serving the Lord, first and foremost, man, all right, those that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, and what's the testimony of Yahweh Shai? That's the spirit of prophecy, man. So he's pissed off at us at what we're teaching, what we're preaching. All right. The words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. But all you Israelites, man. So he's going to be targeting you. And really, it's the wrath of the Lord. All right. Upon you Israelites, man. And it's just going to. And the Lord is just using Esau Edom. Esau Edom to manifest that. All right. That was it on that Psalms. So let's go back to Ezekiel. Let me make sure. Yep. Ezekiel chapter 21 and verse. Uh, Nine again, it says, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Lord Yahweh, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? And there you go. Seeing, all right, that the Lord is about to bring his great wrath, seeing that destruction is being prepared, seeing that troops are getting ready to start throwing uh, 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 people into concentration camps, all right, seeing that pestilences are being pushed forth throughout the planet Earth. Okay, all these things, should we then make mirth? What kind of spirit should we be in, man? Should we be in this jolly spirit or should we be in the, the fear of the Lord? Doesn't mean that you aren't going to laugh at times or, or whatever the case may be. But what kind of fear should we have towards Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah? All right. We aren't fearful of Esau Edom. Okay. He's nothing but a man, but he's being used as a tool. By who? The creator. All right. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. So we fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. And the only way... To be delivered out of these coming calamities, to be delivered from the pestilence, to get divine intervention, all right, for us in our households, when all this hell breaks loose, is hiding in the secret place of the Most High, man, having this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the Lord intervening on our behalf, all right, but the Lord is only going to intervene on the behalf of those, all right, uh, who he cares for, man, all right, those that repent, you know, so that's why we're trying to do the things that are pleasing unto him. Right now, so that in that time of wrath, he looks upon us with favor, man. Let's go ahead and grab this in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 2, it says, I'll start at 1. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye, shall, uh, that ye build unto me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made 
And all those things have been, saith the Lord Yahweh. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. And you look up that word look, all right, it means to regard with uh to regard with favor, all right, or care, you know. So the, the ones that are wa uh, walking in the fear of the Lord, trembling at the Lord's words, are right, those are the ones that he's going to regard with care, you know. So we're trying to obtain, we're trying to make sure that we're walking in that fear right now, man. But, you know, I, I mean, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, let me finish off this with this uh, in Second Ezra. I didn't even want to intend it to be this long, but it's all through the spirit. This is Second Ezra chapter 16. In verse, oh no, nah, Salaki, 15. Salaki, yeah. just bear with me. Okay, what, well, 16? All right, this is Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse uh, 70. Mm, I'll start at verse 70. It says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. And that word insurrection means an uprising. Against who? Those that fear the Lord. So ultimately, it start, it's, um, it's the whole nation of Israel, man, because we're the only people that truly uh, have ever walked in the fear of the Lord, right? But even um, furthermore... Um, those that are uh, uh, sincerely serving the Lord, man. But we don't have anything to worry about because as it says in the book of Isaiah, the 59th chapter, let me hit that real quick just to make this point. Isaiah 59 and verse uh, 16. Nah, not 16. 19. Isaiah 50, 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord Yahweh from the west and from the glory Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That's right. So that standard is going to be list, uh, lifted up, man. That's divine intervention, man. Whether it be spiritual powers, angels coming in and delivering us, man. All right, the cherries coming down and delivering us, whatever the case may be, it's great divine intervention, man. But then it's going to go into who that divine intervention is going to be uh, sent forth for. Verse 20, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgressions in Jacob, saith the Lord. So those that repent. All right. So we all have access. OK, all of us being Israelites. All right. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans and you other Israelites that are scattered abroad. All right. We all have access to a standard being lifted up for us if we repent, man, in truth and sincerity, all right, and stay in that repentful uh, uh, state into the end, man, continually crying out unto the Lord, walking meek and humble before the Lord, we'll all have that protection, all right, as long as we repent, man, but majority of our people aren't going to do that. It says, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgressions and Jacob saith the Lord. So that's who that standard is going to be lifted up for, those that repent. All right, this is the only way out of all the cell that's going to be breaking out loose, man. All right, so let's go back to that second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse uh, 71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So you're going to have troops coming in, kicking down doors, all right, uh, uh, throwing people into camps, so on and so forth, right? It says... Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. And that's right. So when these things happen, it's going to be clear who's the chosen of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Through various things, divine intervention. Okay. However, the Lord makes it manifest, but it's going to be made clear that these men, all right, here it is, all this hell is breaking out loose, but they're protected. All right. They're in good spirits. Okay. Divine intervention is happening on, on their behalf. They're eating while everybody else is going through a famine. All right. Everybody is in sorrow, but they have joy of heart. They still have hope. All right. It's going to be seen. It's going to be clear. It says, Hear, O, uh, hear, o ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. That's right. So the Lord is going to deliver us, man. Lord's will we be a part of that number. Verse 75, but be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God. So there you go, man. So the Lord is going to keep us 
protect us, man, and all this hell that's going to happen. All right, let me finish off with this in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. That's right. So it says in um, the book of Acts 14 and 22, all right, confirming the souls of the uh, the disciples that we through much tribulation shall uh, enter into the kingdom of the Mosai. So we're going to go through particular things just to be proven, man, just to be tried, as it said, uh, uh, be tried as gold in the fire. All right. So we're going to be in the furnace of affliction. We're going to be in different uh, situations where it seems like we can't get delivered out. All right. But as long as we hold on our faith until Yahweh Hashem Yahweh all right, we'll be proven, all right, to be uh, faithful unto him, man. And then he's going to deliver us, man. All right. So it says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. So some of us may get thrown into those camps, man. But it's that we may be tried. All right. It's to see if we're real, if we're really going to be faithful unto the Lord in the face of adversity, if we're going to hold on unto these words. All right. The belief, the faith that the Lord has given us is a gift. If we're going to hold on to that, man. All right. In the face of all adversity, that's what the Lord wants to see. Just like you try Abraham, man. All right. He allowed him to be tested with the thing that he loved the most, being his son. And when he was willing to sacrifice all right, what he loved the most and he showed that to the Lord, then what? <laughs> the, the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord stopped him and it was accounted unto him as faith. All right. Or his faith was accounted unto him as a uh, uh, righteousness, man, because he showed forth that faith by willing, uh, being, uh, being willing, willing to do that, man. So it's different things that we have to go through just to be tried, man. But it says, um, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. So there we go, man. That's all we need to do is to remain faithful unto death. And it's easier, of course, said than done. All right. But that's why we need to stay prayed up now, fasting now. All right. Walking meek and humble before the Lord. So that um and, and pray that he gives us the, the strength to endure these coming times, man, because these are gonna be some some heavy times, man. Times that men of the Lord just saw in visions and they got sick. All right. And we're gonna be in the midst of actually living it, living in it. But the most high is our God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So Lord's what I was out of find out. I'm gonna end it right there. And give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, the Bahanners of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.